per the schedule. I just completed feeding for the day and cleaning the barn. Five loads of manure spread. I'm shutting the gates, starting the furnace in the shop, and I'm gonna work in there most of the night. self-propelled wind rower uh, it's in here for service along with everything else we do we make about I think and you'll see in some of the other videos we make about oh 3,000 big square bales of dry hay this is in here had a leaking wheel motor got it repaired so now I get the fun project all by my very lonesome of setting it up in there well, it probably weighs 80 pounds, but it's the depth that I'm going to struggle getting it up in. So that is tonight's project. Should have named the beaver instead of buggy. What it's like to be pregnant. You think that's at all like what it is? Our babies is pokey. That thing is unpleasant this bind it had a bad wheel motor this is ready to come out of the shop I actually had to wait almost two months to get the wheel motor back in-house and get it fixed $1,400 bill but this machine is ready to come out that's the last of my crop equipment that needs to be serviced we're essentially ready to go for the springtime Massey Ferguson 9635 mower with a four roller um, conditioning system we love it. It's been nothing but a great machine. Um, this is one of the things that Agco builds that I am tried and true to. Uh, we run Massey Ferguson or Agco balers. We love them. And then we run Case Ice tractors ahead of them and we love them. We do most of our mechanic work or 90% of our mechanic work in-house. I have a MIG TIG welder. Anything for the maple business, the farm, I weld, I fix. Um, it's not much of a shop. It's a 40 by 70, really old girl. And, uh, but it keeps me warm and keeps the wind off me in the winter time. It's really dirty right now, which gives me major anxiety. But uh, once I get this mower out and once I get the vacuum pumps back in, it'll be all nice and clean again and we'll be able to start from scratch. There's no insulation on the walls of my shop, only in the ceiling. And I used to have a used motor oil furnace. I could never keep oil clean enough. So I built a wood furnace and this thing is a heat exchanger, schedule 80 pipe inside of there, custom glove warmer right there. Cut that's custom. Uh, so I built this bad boy. I'm pretty proud of it. It'll, it'll get this shop 65 degrees. Big old fire happening winter days i don't get much time to work in here usually after i come out of the woods from 5 to 8 30 i'll work in the shop every night i'm kind of a one-man band so i got to keep all this stuff rolling this evening i'm in the shop servicing vacuum pumps this is the actual pump right here it's atlantic fluids uh, 150 cfm vacuum pump the pump alone costs about four thousand dollars Everything you see here, I custom built. All of our pumps run in the woods, so we don't have electric yet to power them. So there's really no place you can go buy any, any of this. Um, you can buy the engine, the pump, but that's oil reclaimer, but that's about it. So I built this machine. Um, this vacuum pump will create about 28 inches of vacuum. The most vacuum you can pull is the barometric pressure, which if you watch the weather is 30, 30.5. But anyways, I built everything here. Um, this will run in the woods. It runs about three quarts of fuel per hour and it's all oil contained. So it just keeps using its oil. Um, so I guess I'll go start to, start to finish on this. It's powered by a 60 horse, uh, 236 cubic inch Perkins engine with a twin disc clutch. Um, 
this triple belt runs the actual pump. It will take every ounce of horsepower this machine's got running at about 1200 RPM. The second belt you see is actually, this is where, this is where I started here building. This is a power steering pump off of a 1980 Chevrolet pickup. Um, so what we're doing here is we're cooling the oil. This hose here sucks out of the oil reclaimer, which the vacuum pump blows the oil back into. Then it pressure, this is the pressure line, comes up here to the front to this aluminum radiator, which that runs in the bottom, out the top. That's how you make the most effective cooling. And it comes back here to a filter, which I'll turn that valve on when we start, to the filter, filters the oil, and then feeds the pump. There's a secondary line on this in case the filter was ever to fail or the actual pump itself ever happen to fail it can always get oil through this hose then there's another line here that goes to another filter and sucks any oil that might end up in the top of the sock up there this is the inlet for the vacuum after that that's pretty much it about this machine it's got a hundred gallon fuel tank for a base really a nice working unit so after that the other thing that I got going on here, which they're not in here right now, all of our vacuum pumps have um, Wi-Fi at them with cameras. I run a camera facing all the gauges to make sure at nighttime when I'm home, I've got oil pressure and it's not overheating. And then I've got a camera inside of the releaser tank, which I'll show you as you subscribe and follow along to what we're up to here. It's kind of a complicated system. Like I said, none of this you can go to a store and buy. It's all custom built, custom put together. And uh, I have four of these. There's only one of them that I haven't, that I didn't personally build. I bought from another producer. And then I have an, a spare that's ready to go at all times that can take over in case one of these goes down. So this pump here is not a pump that I built. Um, guy that built this did a fantastic job put the tattletail Murphy switch on it. So this one will shut down if anything goes over temperature. Um, I added my Wi-Fi box, plexiglass top. This is a 250 CFM Trevaney uh, liquid ring as well. Oil reclaimer, vapor lock tank. Uh, guy did a nice job on this pump. This pump here will handle about 5,000 taps. It'll actually handle more than that, but that's the woods it goes on. Is the We call it the home woods, 5,000 tap woods. So. so this pump is ready to go. Got my connection, connected to three devices, one being my phone, one being a wise cam that moves. That's a wise cam pan and wise cam stationary. Both of these have their mounts in the woods on the pump and in the, in the releaser house. So at the end of every night, I just shut off my Generac inverters and we are good to go. So as you guys subscribe to our channel, like, share the whole deal, you will notice me all through maple season being angry because I forgot to shut these little gadgets off. And when I go to start the pump up tomorrow, it'll be stone dead. But I have a handy little tool for that, my lifesaver. This is a little boost box. This thing will start a dead anything in 10 below weather. I love it. Subscribe to our channel, do that. We're working hard at this for you folks. Hope you guys enjoy this maple, maple adventure that we have going here. Headed home for the night. As you can see, very, very aggressive weather. Very unpleasant. Charlie, why don't you come inside? No? I guess stay right out. Okay. Love you. She's weird. Taking my stuff off. Done for the evening. Yankee Farmer out.